Okay, so these are the directions um, up to this point. We have gone through and prepared our images. Um, the first thing uh, we're going to do to make sure that our document size all matches up, I'd like you guys to go to your Photoshop file and check to make sure that what your image size is. So in Photoshop, go to Image and then Image Size and check out and see what your pixel dimension is or inches. You could actually use either one. So mine, what's my pixel dimension here? All right, good. So that's important because when you go to animate, uh, and that's the name of the program, not an actual action here. And again, this used to be called Flash. Now it's called Animate. All right, so now if we go in here, when we're creating our new document, we want to make sure that our pixel dimensions are the same as our Photoshop document. All right, otherwise you have to do a lot of resizing and it's just more work than you really have to do. Okay, so now we're getting our, Photoshop, our Animate document set up to be the same size as we did in Photoshop. Now what we're going to do is we're going to select File, Import to Library. All right, and now we're going to select that Photoshop file. And what it does, the, the benefit of using a Photoshop file is now you can select whatever layers you want to bring in. So this is why I was saying if you didn't have all of your images prepared, um, I still want you to follow along and you can always just add new layers as you create them. All right, so all right, so you would want to go in here and make sure all your layers are selected or if there was ones you didn't want to have selected for whatever reason you can do that and we'll select import. All right, and now what happens is these become what are called assets or basically reusable items. So in your library, all right, this panel, this library, is where you have all of your reusable objects. All right, so I have a composite Photoshop image, and then I have all the layers. So what I'd like you guys to do is just place your background image in there, and then place um, the, what we're going to call the, the up state, right? If, if we think about buttons, there's four states, the up, over, down, and what's called the hit. So when the mouse is nowhere near the what we're going to create a button, that's what I'm going to refer to as the up state. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to find, so you can see between these two images, this would be my up state because there's no color applied, and this one would be my over. So I'm going to drag the up state of my image in here and just place it. All right, so with this picture placed on here, we want to turn this into a button. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to Modify, Convert to Symbol, and we're going to make this. You can, I would try to get in the habit of naming these things. So like I know that this is going to be my ding sound. So I'm going to name it. I'm going to assign it as a button. Very important that you do assign it as a button and press OK. All right, so now you should see in your library that you have this button, which is indicated by like a, a oval with a finger over it. And what I'd like you to do is double click that. You guys should know how buttons work because you've all been on the internet, right? If you're up, that's when you're not on the object. For your over, that's when you're hovering over it. So that's what we're going to do next. So left click on this little box here that says over. And we're going to right click and then select insert keyframe. All right, then what we're going to do is to change the appearance of it. We're going to swap it out for the other appearance. So I'm going to select the image. I'm going to go to properties. I'm going to select swap and then find my other appearance. All right, so now if I go through here and I can just click on these two appearances. So I have up and over. And I can test this by doing a control enter. So now if I come over here, I can see that this is my flash player and I can see that it's hovering. The, the last thing to do for sound is we'll go back to edit our button. All right, so if you were in your scene mode, right, you can just double click it to get into that sub selection. Then we're gonna go in here, we're gonna insert another keyframe. And then all we're gonna do is just drag our sound file um, onto our stage, which I don't have one right now, so I have to import one.